He's doing uh, real huge stretches. Kind of like this. He's doing B. And then doing uh, the same notes. The B minor triad on the D string. And then the low E. Or at least I think so, because I can't imagine any other way you do it. But you must have like the, the world's biggest, most huge left hand or, or small scale guitar or something. Instant tendonitis. Just add this lick. Um, let's see a couple other a couple other examples of things you could do with that. Here's, here's something kind of like that, but a little bit easier. Uh, you can take the one I've got written out and put it in E, so we get in twelfth position. And uh, that also be E, G, and B. And you just reach down with your third finger and get the fourteenth fret of the G string, which would be a B note, and do it like this. And to get the lower octaves. Try doing the same notes on the D string, which would be 14th position, same left hand shape. For that, particular, for that particular thing, I'm picking every note except for the descending part on the high E string, so it'll all be picked, 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 except for those two notes that I pull off on the high E. real crazy, you can go down and hit the notes on the low E string, which will be the same frets as the high E string. Another, another instant tendonitis one, but that, one, that one's a little bit easier. Um, that kind of thing can get you into some real cool uh, string skipping ideas. Well, actually, that one's coming up. Yeah, that, that one's the last one. We'll go to this one first, then we'll get into the terrifying string skipping legs. This one is more of a sweet picking thing. It's the third one on the page, says C major above it. Um, basically what I've been trying to do a lot is get arpeggio legs that are a little more rhythmic. A lot of times when you hear guys do arpeggios, it's, it's uh, oh, oh. I, I certainly would never do that. Um, and uh, th this one's a little more rhythmic oriented. You can do hip, hip, hip triplet things or whatever out of it. Uh, it's based on a C major shape, the cowboy C, and uh, I'm adding a couple notes and an F note at the beginning because it's kind of a pedal tone sound. Something like that. Uh, but that's basically the beginning of it. For, for picking that, I'm doing uh, all alternate picking for the first couple notes. Get down, up, down, up, and then two more ups. So I have three upstrokes in a row. From there I've got two notes on the D string that I play. One happens again, so it's actually three notes. And uh, that'll sound like this, so the whole lick sounds really good. Excuse my, my my 60s lingo. It's coming back. Hip, groovy, all those words. Um, the next one, 12th position, E minor. Sounds like this. A little slow first. If you look on, the, I've got I've got the word string written there. You can look. It goes from uh, three notes on the first string to five notes on the third string to five on, on the first and two in the second. You can kind of notice. You know, wash my hands on how it goes, just from string to string like that. Some um, variations on that you can do. Uh, just take take like that first first part and, and uh, harmonize it or whatever. Sound like this. That's 
slows the fun going from the low E to the high, to the high E. Take two. Makes, makes those normal licks seem easy. And uh, any questions about this? Basically, if you, if you didn't bring your video video camera, hopefully the, the music underneath will, will help. I've got uh, uh, pretty uh, pretty explicit upstroke and downstroke and hammer on pull up notations underneath. This pickup is a Duncan distortion, which is wired in parallel. Uh, it just makes it a little bit treblier. I've got aluminum tape on it to shield it. Um, Someone mis mis mistook it for duct tape. Shame. Um, it just, it just. Uh, if you have the whole guitar shielded, you can, you can disconnect the wire from your bridge. There's no, uh, there's no buzzing noises. What's your deck? That's a uh, Duncan vintage Firebird, I think. It's. Uh, I just love it. I can get a, a high note off. It was pretty cool. Uh, one thing that really helps for consistency is uh, to kind of go through and just figure out, I mean, a, a lot of times, if, you're, if your picking is inconsistent, you'll consistently make mistakes in certain spots. And if you go through that and kind of figure out what upstrokes and downstrokes are really important to nail, for instance, if you're doing a straight string 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 scale, you'll find that every time, uh, every time your first finger hits, uh, hits, hits a string, it'll, it'll alternate between a down and up. You start out with a down, up, concentrate on that first, then you may get to the point where uh, you only want to concentrate on the down, so you can go like down, down, down. A lot of times I'll, I'll just think about that and it'll help a whole lot. Um, one thing I've been doing lately to make those real fast runs a little more rhythmic oriented is uh, I'll do something like that, something like the zero between scales, and then shift up to the next position and descend. The, the same thing. What happens is that reverses your picking technique. You know, you get you are used, real used to having a downstroke with your first finger on the sixth string, and uh, when you go up and shift to the next position, everything reverses. So it, that becomes an upstroke, and uh, that, that feels real weird at first. But a good exercise for that. Try this one. Just take uh, six notes, any any six notes in a scale, shift to the next position, and descend. And just do that over and over again, shifting between the two positions. So it's not like this slow. Most of the time, I'm muting on the bridge to get just to keep the strings from going real wild. I, I, uh, actually, I play a little lighter because my my amp system now is really responsive, so I can I can pick real light and still have the still have it tearing everybody's bass off. Um, <laughs> but uh, a lot of times when I do arpeggio stuff, I'll end up picking a little closer. If I have to do two-handed picking at the same time, kind of like the, something like this. two-handed, so I'll pick closer up there. In fact, so someone had requested a major seventh and a minor seventh uh, arpeggio. So uh, here they are. Slow! Slow. <laughs> they, they slow major seventh arpeggio. I basically just kept this out of the Frank and Bali speed picking book. Um, it's uh, pretty much all odd numbers of notes per string, either one or three. Be one. Here it is loud and slow. Pull off a little bit quicker. And a minor seven. There's, there's uh, usually when I do minor seven, I do the string skipping stuff. Actually, a fairly easy finger to visualize. You've got, uh, for instance, if you're going to do A minor seventh, I just go up to twelfth position, play G, A, and C on the on the G string. 
the seventh third and, or seventh group third. And then I wouldn't play the B string at all. We'd go right to the high E and play E, G, and, and A. So you don't, you have six notes. Out of any mice of the vision. That's way easier, or for me anyways, way easier than sweeping and stuff. Right, so for the, for the fingering, you'd have like a, a whole step and then a minor third, and then for the high string, you'd have a minor third and then a whole step. So basically, your, your first finger picky you this in the same place the whole time, just for the G string, you use your second finger, for the E string, you use your third. Like this. A lot of times I'll reach down with my third finger and get the low C. shapes because it's, it's the same fingering for each string. <laughs> Spooky sound. Ooh, eight finger technique. Um, let me see. Well, if, if you get, if you, uh, I mean, I think I've done this a while, but, uh, but that, that usually doesn't matter. This is the, the lick of the future. I can, I can get this about like one out of twenty times. We'll see how my luck is. What about your drill? Uh, yeah, where's your drill? Oh, I don't have. I don't have the drill here. Well, if you come to the show, I'll have the drill. Is, it gonna, is the bit gonna stay on? <laughs> yeah, I got. I got a new improved bit. Okay, cool. <laughs> Scalp neck. Uh, I like the feel a lot. The problem that I have is the high E always seems to go off the edge of the fretboard. Um, I have my, like the way I usually set my guitars, I have the string spacing real close. On, on this, I've got, I've got the saddles as close together as they'll go. So I've got a lot of room on either side of the low E strings. And when I get, so I'm used to being able to have some play there, and when I get on a scalp neck with a, a strat type spacing, the high E always goes right off the edge of the fretboard. Um, but I always use real tall frets, so it's, I get to have the same kind of feel without having to have the string slip off all the time. I think that what, what I'll try next is like a scalp that's only in the middle. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> any, more, any more questions? Way back there. I've never, I've actually never owned a guitar with a maple neck or a maple fingerboard, so I don't know. Um, I guess Rose would. <laughs> I'll put over here. You guys know about it. You don't have any questions. I have a question. What time is it? Uh, some people have said they want the IT set to make some weird video games. Oh, yeah. I don't know how musical these are, but they definitely resemble video games. My favorite one, this, this isn't two-handed, but I just try to get the same note on every string. <laughs> oh, decent. Just kind of, I got a metronome a little longer. I'm just getting an F. All sorts of weird things you can do with this with, this, with the old six string twanger.
name, name this one. Duck and distortion in parallel, parallel. with uh, aluminum tape over it to, con to, to confuse spectators. How often do you and Bruce have to practice together to keep your aluminum to a fight every day? It's nice when we can. Um, although it's, it's really weird because a lot of times the harmonies that to, to me, I mean, ones that will sit there and just go, man, these are impossible. Why did we ever write these? Um, live, they'll, they'll come off real well. Um, so a lot of times I'm feeling adrenaline has something to do with it. Okay, how about your harmonies with John when you're, when you're doing the bass riffs too along mm -hmm. with that? Like what kind of scale do you use when you're feeling like, like on Scarify for example? Mm -hmm. so what kind of scale? Oh, it's just a uh, natural minor. <laughs> Uh, I actually, I actually do use Malak Meyer occasionally. Have you heard the um, the Joy Tafoya stuff that I played on? Because that, that's that's chock full of it. Um, I basically use it the same way that I use harmonic minor stuff. If you've got a progression with a, a one chord and a five chord, um, the, the normal way you use harmonic minor would be, uh, let's say, if you're doing E to B, play E harmonic minor over the B. <laughs> minor instead. It's, it sounds like it's real similar sound. In fact, the, uh, that, that particular application, um, basically what you get is a, a natural minor scale with a raised third. It sounds, uh, sounds like this. Which is real common, I mean, like a lot of classical stuff, if you've ever heard this. Uh, that's the same scale. That's, uh, all the notes in natural minor, except the third is raised up to a major third. So it's, it's not weird. A lot of melodic minor stuff is kind of associated with being jazzy or kind of out, and it can sound it can sound real in. I'm just going to keep slowly backing away from this microphone until it's real loud, then get real close and go, yeah! What's that? Oh, effects? Yeah. Um, yeah actually, I've been, I've been, I've got a whole rack thing that lights up and, and it dices and slices at this point. Um, I'm using an, an ADA MP1 2 preamp, which is the, the world's coolest thing since the wheel and fire. Um, and I'm, I'm running that through some reverbs and um, a harmonizer occasionally, a hush to to make it silent, and uh, then it goes out to. I'm using these Ampeg V4s just because they're 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 cheap, clean power, and uh, nobody knows what they are. Um, they, they sound real real bad for like a straight. Dis if you plug straight in, they're they're no good for distorted amps. But as a clean amp, which is basically what I need for because the preamp has tons of distortion, they work real well. And uh, basically, compared to the system I'm using before, it's it's real it's real. I get a lot of different tones. I can step on a button and have a really clean tone without tons of hiss, which I couldn't really do before. And uh, also the tone is just unbelievable. I, I, uh, in my rehearsal studio, I AB'd my new system with uh, Tubble Line Missile Boogie Mark III and my best sounding Marshall Mod Amps. And uh, it was like night and day. Way back here. Um, there's an album by a group called Mad in the World. Did they thank you on that album? I was wondering what you're involved with. A group called what? Mad in the World. That's a, t a title of ours, but I don't remember an album by that. Oh, you mean Roxanne? I don't know. Well, I thank them back, but I, I don't know what it's. <laughs> we, we have a tune called that. Maybe they. Maybe that's where they got their name. <laughs> sure. Uh, actually, it, uh, the question is, the two arpeggio runs in Sacrifice. The, um, I actually only do the first one, which is a diminished arpeggio. I do it with the string skipping thing. Uh, Bruce does the next one, which is a G major triad, like, basically, uh, looks a lot like the, the old G bar chord with the thirds at. Um, 
Question: Who haven't I? Who hasn't gotten one? Who's been? Who's got the the happening question of the year? Your next album. Next album. It's all I have one. <laughs> oh, it just goes it modulates from D minor to B minor. <laughs> It's a, a lot of stuff where I'm doing, I'm going up six notes in D minor, natural minor, then maybe uh, studying on that string, like the A string, and doing six, or doing four notes up and down. I'm going up six. There's an ad for GIT that I did, where I've got a, a lick written out, and it's basically that that kind of that kind of sequence. There. Real good exercise for all time picking. You get a lot of the. Uh, you have to change real fast. So the two strings with that side picking. Thanks a million for coming out. Sorry, I couldn't stay longer, but I got to go to the show, and uh, it's all here. We're playing in Anaheim at the Celebrity Theater with L.A. Guns. <laughs> we had, we got no sound check, but we don't need sound check. We got our own sound, man. We got the ADA. Who's opening? Um, Triumph? No, I don't know. <laughs> we did, we did have. There was an ad. Uh, for our last show at Jezebel's, they had uh, some magazine they saw, they had an ad for our show, and it said, uh, it, first of all, it had us on the wrong night, but it had us headlining over Triumph and Riot. So Racer X, Triumph, Riot, I thought that was great. I didn't know they were playing on the bill, but... <laughs> Thank you so much. Here's Mark Wittenberg. Now, before you run off, we've done something to bribe you to stay here. <laughs> <laughs>